Sabbath, the seven days? And how is it celebrated? And is it consecutively? Is it a day here or a day there and all those kinds of things? And so, yes, Kwanzaa is a seven-day celebration. And while it's highlighted during this particular week, December 26th to January 1st, the principles we try to celebrate every day, 365 days. And so what you would do in terms of celebration is every day, starting with today, you would have a celebration on each of the days of Kwanzaa. Of course, today is Umoja. Everybody say Umoja. Umoja. And Umoja just simply means unity. It, this, this celebration is a synthesis of many African and Pan-African celebrations. And a, another common question is, well, is Kwanzaa celebrated in Africa? You know, is this just an American response to other holidays that we may have felt did not include us or, or those kind of things? And Kwanzaa is celebrated in Africa, but Africa is a large continent. As a matter of fact, the United States could fit into Africa almost three times in a large region. So different parts of Africa have different celebrations. Down in the area that we call the Southern or South Africa, Zimbabwe, okay, Lesotho, Angola, they have their celebrations on the western coast of Africa, where Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, the Gambia, Guinea, on that side, they have their celebrations, of course, in the Central Africa, the Congo, and areas like that. They have their celebrations on the eastern side of Africa. We talk about Ethiopia, Somalia. They have their celebrations. And even in the northern sections of Africa, even though there are not as many indigenous Africans in the northern section because of the invasions and there's other Arab, other people there, but they still have celebrations. So there's a variety of celebrations. And so Kwanzaa saw that while they may have looked a little bit different, may have sounded a little bit, we, we saw the synthesis. We kept seeing the same thing, maybe in different language forms, maybe in various parts. And so the idea was to synthesize a variety of celebrations and create the Kwanzaa. When you go to Venezuela, when you go to Colombia, when you go to Brazil, when you go to Chile, Argentina, Okay, when you go to Belize, when you go to Jamaica, okay, Antigua, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Cuba. I know you're used to hearing words like Hispanic or Latino, but these are all part of the African diaspora. So whether your name is Williams or Hernandez, Muhammad, they're, they're all part of this celebration. Of course, today is Mumoja. So, yes, today would be the first day. And your goal is to celebrate, or if you will, to highlight Kwanzaa during this week. Each day, you would emphasize one of those particular points. And of course, today is our first day. We call it Umoja. Everybody say Umoja. Umoja. And that just means unity. You look in this room, all various shades of colors and ideas and theological backgrounds. This is not a religious celebration. It's not to take the place of Christmas or Hanukkah or or anything that you may believe in. It's just bringing people together under a common story. Many of us have many stories. Many of us have, may have Spanish blood and Irish blood and Russian blood and Polish blood. None of that is diminished. But there is a common experience for people of African descent. And what uh, Kwanzaa seeks to do is to bring that together, uh, highlight it in the week. So, so yes, it's seven days starting with the 26th through the first of the year. So the last day is, anybody know? Imani. Imani. And Imani is? Faith. Okay. And Kwanzaa as a celebration, as Papa Talani said, came out of the many celebrations in Africa which were what you might call harvest, celebration of the first fruits. You hear that as part of Kwanzaa as well. So throughout Africa, you, you, you've got that celebration. And Kwanzaa, as Baba said, is the synthesis of all of those, all of those put together. Now Kwanzaa also, just to note, Kwanzaa also, as a celebration, has been embraced from all over the world. Even though it came out of this country, 
created by an African American. Uh, it's celebrated all over the world. The estimate is about 30 million people celebrate Kwanzaa now, all over the world. In addition to their own traditional celebration, they've also embraced Kwanzaa. Yes. Each day, you, I'm sorry, each day you celebrate one of the principles. Seven is a very important number. And, and seven is throughout Kwanzaa. Seven principles, seven symbols, seven days. You hear eight, Stop. it's not one. Everything is Leave seven. Okay? No. What's the dream? Mm -hmm. Just Hanukkah. 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 And most public schools in particular, we have to learn other holidays. And so the dreidel celebration or the song sometimes gets confused with the Hanukkah celebration and things like that. Um, so that's where the dreidel comes from. We learn the song and we make it in school and we kind of spin it. There's all kinds of, um, you know, different ways to emphasize certain points. Um, so you know what? Why don't, when we, when we finish, because we're going to go through some things here, and then if you have more questions, you can come up and they can help you. There's lots of books, and now you go online, it's a lot on Kwanzaa. Um, I, I, was, I get on and I find games and arts and crafts and things that you can do with your children for Kwanzaa. So there's, there's tons of information now. And for those of you who would like to don't need any particular skill, everybody can participate. Is that okay? All right. So the first um, dance and rhythm that I'd like to share with you is called Lamban. Can you say Lamban? Lamban. Lamban is a very old dance. Comes out of West Africa from the Mandin. All right, so it's practiced uh, in many places in, in West Africa Mali, Guinea, Senegal, Ivory Coast, uh, Senegal, you name it. And so it is a rhythm and a dance that comes from the griots, the oral historians. These are the people who keep the tradition, right? And we all have in our families someone who likes to tell stories, right? Someone who knows a lot of the history. Those are modern day griots. Okay? So um, the, the lamba belongs to the griots. And they do this dance for weddings. But it is also a dance that is done for healing. When you have some any kind of illness, physical, mental, you know, illness, family comes together and community. Your neighbors, everybody comes together to support that person in their beauty and they dance and they sing. All right? Okay, so um, because this is a participatory thing, I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to teach you a song. Okay? <coughs> so the words that you're going to say is that Almighty God who created the king, you could say president, equally created the Rio, or you could translate it as a teacher. So what does that mean? Almighty God equally creates the president, you know, creates the president equally to the teacher. That means nobody is above anyone. In the eyes of God, if you can be you keep it. Is that clear? Yes. That means that we all have the same capability. Nobody can use any excuses. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so repeat after me, say, ah, jolly. Ah, jolly. Ready? Ah, <laughs> 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 
Say Jimbe. Jimbe. Jimbe family. This is Jimbe. Okay? Now, you see how many different types of drums up here? Anybody? Yes. Two. 
very good. We have djembe, which comes in many different sizes. And we have what we call junjun, or songba, or dudunba, which also comes in many different sizes. Now, who can, who can tell me of the family which drum represents the mother? Who can tell? Which one? This one? Very good. Who can always come on in the back? Mother. So the constant is the mother. So the dancer, when she's dancing, that's the drum she's going to listen to. Okay? The mother, the constant. Always depends on mom. So Jimbe represents the father. The father. Very good. So the father speaks loud, has a, has a lot to say. Tells you when to get up, tells you when to go to bed, tells you when to what, whatever, <laughs> right? So, so that's the father. And then, you see we have very small, these double-headed drums we call sangba or dunba or juju. Who does that represent? The children, yes, the children. We call that kikini. Did you say kikini? Kikini. Kikini. We have even small. <laughs> we have the long, a long drum. They come in many sizes, and they're not just in Africa; they're all over the world. So you have some huge ones. I don't know if anybody lives in Hawaii, and you see the women play the huge long drums. Well, same thing in Africa. A long time ago, women played the big, big long drums. Okay. So a lot of the drums. I just wanted to say that. We don't get to see the drums that women play over here. So a lot of times we say women don't come. That's not true. That's not true. You listen to them. <laughs> um, you can even ask some of our master drummers and they will tell you the history. The women are credited with the drums. Right? Oh, um, oh. Shh. Long time ago we gave them to the men to play. But it's the women. So we have a lot of sacred drums that means only women play. You will never see them out for performance because they are sacred drums that women come together and only women play together. So they don't, they won't, they won't bring them out. Okay, just so you can know. Also, which other one do we have? We have so many instruments. Um, we have uh, balcom, a variety of balcom here. These two instruments keep going. <laughs> right? Um, but what I want to do, because we're talking about Kwanzaa, um, we're talking about harvest celebrations. And in Africa, anywhere you go in Africa, they do harvest celebrations. 
very important that we be thankful that we have food to eat. <laughs> you know, we, we appreciate that. We share our food, right? So um, it's a few dances that I know. One is called Kasai. I'm not going to do that one. But Kasai is that celebration when we bring in the food to the vegetables and we want to celebrate. So a lot of Kasai has the basket that you're holding in celebration in the dance, right? A lot of our dances have work movement in it. So if you go out to the fields and you're going to, you know, you're going to get gather those food that's going to be in there, right? Um, even before, when we plant the seed, we play music. Why? Because that's hard work. When you till the land, that's hard work, so you need something to push you so you can do it. <laughs> and that's why we have that music, right? That push you, get the energy to get the work done. Um, so the, the dance I am going to do is called So Mei Ku. Can you say So Mei Ku? So Mei Ku. So Traditions 
So, so, so I'm ready. For I'm this ready challenge. for this challenge, and I was built, and I was built for this. this. I think that I think we that all have we a all have a purpose in life, in life. and mine and mine's going to take on a task that most that most of back away back from, away from. That impossible, that impossible. So people, people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality, 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 